Hey everybody, it is your boy Lonnie Hunter. You know where we are. The Lonnie Hunter Show, and I'm telling you, I couldn't come to Houston without seeing my boy. Brian Courtney Wilson is in the house, in family. The house, man. What's going on, Doc? In the house. Look, see, I'm the house. see, that's how he acts <laughs> off stage. This is what I want y'all to see. <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. man. How are you? It is good to see you. Thanks for having me, man. Listen, you got to tell me because as you look around, we're at a place called The Breakfast Club. Yes. And The Breakfast Club is a staple for Houston. Ah, oh, man. You mentioned Houston, you mentioned The Breakfast Club. Close to 20 years now, man. And uh, I know you said you wanted to find an interesting place to yeah. do an interview. Something this, that was tied to you. Right. This is one of the first places I thought of because this is where uh, my, my ministry sort of launched, man. We were doing live music events. Nice. And I was doing, you know, original music people hadn't heard before. and. Uh, we would have this place jumping, the stage was over there, and uh, there was a pastor at the time that would invite people to come out and hear this music, and that's where I kind of planted the seed for what I was doing. So you weren't Brian Courtney Wilson yet? No, not at, not at all. <laughs> Which is what's important to me, because a lot of people would see these beginnings and not see where you are. Yeah. Or would see these beginnings and get discouraged to the point to where they never get to where you are because they give up too soon. I don't think how you did. How did it take you, how long did it take for you to get to that point to where you are now? I guess we, I guess we close to 20 years in the game. Yeah, you know what man. I mean? I've been in the music business, I guess 15 years, but that doesn't even count the time, and I think about all the time, the times when my dad would make me go to choir rehearsal when I was a child yeah. and the seeds that were being planted then. Uh, the sermons I've heard over the years that were repeated, the, the, uh, the phrases and the themes that were repeated. Right. The people I've watched in music and outside of music um, display faithfulness over sure, the years. Sure. You can't discount how, how those things yeah. impact the way you're gonna make decisions moving forward. So my whole life, man, has, has led to this moment. To you be said honest. something real interesting, though, Brian, when you said the foundation. Because a lot of people who want to do this thing called artistry, they want to do this thing called everybody knows my name. But you say the fact that people know your name now was a long time coming. It was oh, not yeah. an overnight kind of situation. Yeah. Did you ever want to give up? Man, yeah, for sure. What kept you going? Um, one thing I'm grateful for are people that, that uh, take the time to care enough to tell you how much their stuff impacts you. Like when they say, hey man, this really mattered to me that you okay. did that. So those, I always saw those as little guideposts along the way that we were going the right, in the right direction. And you got this unrest in your heart too sometimes. I think when you get a vision from God and you get, you get a plan from God, it won't let you rest nice. until you finish walking it out. Okay. You know? Um, there's a piece of note coming when you learn that you, it doesn't matter whether other people get it or not. Got it. Now hold on, wait a minute. Whether it all does people matter, get it. all people, right? Got it. Because it does matter if you go, if you go, if it's gonna be compelling, if it's gonna be something people want to invest in. Yeah. But you got to get to the place where other people's no's are not discouraging. You. So then the person's no that is a no for them, validly so, does not mean the no for them is a no from everybody else. Right. Because the people who would come to see a Lonnie Hunter for what I bring to the table may not come see a Brian Courtney right. Wilson because it's two different vibes. But I'm trying but to make coming sure. together, right. it's a whole package. Yes. And I want to make, make sure, sure I'm right answering your question about to too. He's about to say something smart. I know he is. Well, 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 <laughs> I, I didn't, because I'm rambling a little bit. <laughs> but to answer your question, what keeps you going is you. You got to decide. Now, I remember one of my mentors say, hey, man, the only, people, the only person got to believe it is you. The only person got to believe it is you. And I didn't know where he was coming from at the time until I started getting more of his story, how many people told him no. Got it. How he would show up at conventions and nobody would talk to him. So he had to make his own circle of friends. And those friends wow. are the friends he leans on now to this day to keep him going in his ministry. You, you just touched on something when you said how he had to make his own circle of friends. There are a lot of people who are not aware that you can make your own platform. Oh, you don't have to conform to the platform that's already there. If you're bold enough and, and your purpose and destiny is clear enough, you can make your own platform. And that's one of the things that you did, Doc, because you're not uh, the Daryl Coley, you know, that, that the run is all over the place. And while that's great, you have decided and come to the conclusion that that is not who you are. Mm -hmm. But when you say Brian Courtney Wilson, 
everybody knows how to describe your five. That's, you know, that's kind of you to say that. Like, it I is. Think it's a lot yeah. that you would say that. Yeah. Thank I you. mean, in, in, in introducing you, and we've been on tour together, and I've watched you come between, say, a Dorinda and a Ricky Diller. You know what I'm saying? Right. And then here you are in, in the middle doing what you do, but you never tried to stray and be who she was and who you thought he might be after you. You stayed where you were. Well, that's, you know what? Circling back to the Breakfast Club mm -hmm. and why this is important to me, I think that's the seed for that was planted here. Like we would come here and we would do music that didn't have a context. Got it. You know, it wasn't church music, although it was church themes in it. Mm -hmm. And these the people that were coming didn't know what to expect. And so some nights you would do your thing and people would just like, I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> and so you got to decide whether are you doing the right thing. You know, at church, you get affirmation right. and after affirmation. Yeah. Sometimes regardless of whether it was good or not, like if you said Jesus in the song, that was right. like enough, right? So here we had to, we had to like really dig deep and, and decide, okay, is what we're saying worth saying regardless of who responds to it. So then how much would you say you are influenced by R&B? Because you sing gospel, but there there is tinges of R&B. You say tinges. Right, that's a good word, right? You like that word, you like that? Tinges of R&B in there where you can say, I can see this dude doing a love song easily. Yeah. I, a Luther song, any of that kind of stuff. Well, I grew up, I grew up girl crazy. So I, I've listened to a lot of them. Got it, got uh, it. Donny Hathaway was one of my favorites. In fact, I was introduced to Donny Hathaway by a girl I had a crush on at the time. She oh, said, you oh. sound like Donny Hathaway. And I had never <laughs> heard him before. And when I heard Donny Hathaway, I, I fell in love. Never got the girl, but I was, you know, I yeah. got the Donny Hathaway, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, uh, I, I just like music that moves you and communicates clearly. That's what I'm into. So then when the concert is over, music stops, lights are off, you go home, what are you turning on? Here of late, I've been listening to a lot of jazz and classical music. It puts me in like a real peaceful place. I can see that because when I listen to other people's music, if it's not, if I'm at home, if it's not jazz or classical, it has some vocal on it. Yeah. And I can't in my mind just appreciate the music. I'm always listening to the vocal, so I'm, I'm on a technical side of the yeah. listening vibe. I just want to sit back and listen. And one, one thing I'm trying to do too is um, make different connections, you know, in terms of, I want to avoid one sounding like everybody else. I try to avoid like listening to 13 because it'll seep into you unconsciously. Absolutely. Sometimes, I think. And then what I try to do intentionally is uh, do things outside the norm that kind of shake up the apple cart, so to speak. Okay. And maybe I make a different connection creatively. You know what I'm saying? I got what you're so that's saying. Why I, that's why I've been trying to listen to the jazz and the classical here of late, just to see, you know, that leads me down a different path. Were you ever a minister of music? I have done that. <laughs> <laughs> so why does that bring forth outright laughter? You know what I'm saying? What is that about? I what, just, how was that experience? Because that... first of all, I'm sitting in front of like one of the most esteemed music <laughs> ministers. For real, you've been doing it a long time. Thank you, man. You, uh, you've been able to stay at the same spot for years, you yeah. know what I mean? That's not my story. <laughs> like, <laughs> there are times I've been okay. to churches, they're like, yo, B, yo, it's, I was not, I don't consider myself one of the greatest at doing that. Got it. From a musical standpoint. Got it. The ministry part, I was good at though. I was real good at that. Part. Got it. And um, So what do you mean, like like teaching the choir or teaching the Yeah, when the I first started, team? Okay. I actually got, I got my start teaching parts at the church where I got my first deal, to be honest. So I'm sitting up there trying to be, I always joke, trying to be Kirk Carr, like trying to figure right. out how to do that. Right. That just ain't me. I'm right. not that guy, you know. Uh, but I thought that that's what I needed to be in front of those people yeah. to move them. Church will move you to that place. But bro, because what they expect. It wasn't dope. <laughs> <laughs> it, it wasn't dope. <laughs> it wasn't I'm gonna dope. use that. <laughs> and how long did you stay? Um, man, at least four years there. And then it's, it's sometimes that's what you do just to make it. Like you're in gospel music, you're trying to stay connected to the church to keep going. Um, uh, so I've done it in different spots. 
may do it again. I've gotten better at teaching parts. Since, okay, you know okay. I mean? Well, hopefully, you, you, after, 20 years, after 20 years, hopefully you know a part or two. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. But uh, I, what's the best way to put it? I am more comfortable now just being me. And I don't even know how to define it. Okay. But I don't feel the need to be a choir director. That's good. Or to be a praise and worship leader. Leader, okay. although I can do it. Right. You know what I mean? I, I like doing what I do. And, that's and nothing wrong with that. Flat footed and prayerfully communicating something that um, serves as an anchor in the storm. Got it. it serves as a light in the darkness. Uh, is. Uh, uh, those points of living water where, where you thought things were dry and done. You good, know? good. I, I know you I'm deep now. Good. I'm you deep now. Right now. Come on, come on, <laughs> lift your hand. Lift your hand. <laughs> so, Brian, tell me, all of this is over, the music is over, and you're just out chilling, you hanging. What are you doing? I love to play basketball. I still do. Really? That. Yeah. And okay. You any good? I'm good enough oh, to where I still kind of get picked and get oh, okay. the basketball. You're not the last one picked? Not every day, no. Okay. Not every day. Okay. I would be the last one picked. No, I don't get I'm not the last one. I'm not the first one either, though. Okay. And they call me school. Now I'm school on the court. Where at first, you know, people compete with you. When you school on the court, people applaud when you make shots. They're like, oh, that's <laughs> nice, school. That's nice. <laughs> So are they impressed by that, or are they just surprised like, that you oh, made it? School, 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 school. <laughs> that is last movie you saw? Last movie. Uh, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think what the Saints will judge me for too. I watched. Don't worry about them. Don't okay. worry about them. Maybe I watched I... that, that uh, movie Booksmart. Oh, okay. It's about these two girls who had decided to really focus on high school so they could go to the best schools. And they realized that even though they focused, they missed out on them out in high school. They didn't really live their lives. And the guys around them that they thought were missing out on going to the right school, they were going to the same school, but they happened to have build community to it, hang out and have a good time. And that's the last movie you saw? I think so. When I'm did that come out? That. I think it came out about a year ago. Olivia Wilde directed it. Okay, so you're not too far behind. No, no, it's about a year ago. Okay, all right, cool. I don't go to the movies a lot. The only reason I ask is because outside of Brian Courtney Wilson, the singer, you're a family man. You got kids, yeah. you got a wife, so... And my wife doesn't like the movies. Really? Yeah, she like, that's like, why are we paying for a nap? Because I'm about to go to a sleep nap. again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she about right, too. So what do y'all like to do? Eat. You know, we really? like going to nice restaurants. We like... Uh, you know, we, my son is in his senior year, and got so it. a lot of stuff is around him at this point, too. So you got a 17-year-old and a... A 18-year-old. Uh, 18 18-year-old, yeah. yeah, and she's, she's in college? In, yeah, she's in college. Where does she go? She goes to Cornell University. So you paying for college, and then you're about to pay for college again next year? Yeah, I mean, yeah. God has been good, though. Yeah. God has been good. Keep singing, sir. God has been good, yeah. <laughs> keep, keep singing. You God, better keep God, singing. God, God <laughs> I've been faithful and shown a lot of favor and grace. That's good. And my man. kids are good. They smart kids. And they they are they are worth investing in. We gotta go talk to the fathers. Not about gospel music, not about industry. Talk to the fathers of being able to work and keep a family in place to where everything is going to a positive direction. The fathers. I think over the, over the years I've learned that the most important investment you can make is your presence in your child's life. You just gotta show up. And sometimes you think you need to show up with a lot of gifts or money and got stuff it. like that. No, you gotta show up and be present and talk. And don't discount um, the value of the stories you have to share. Okay. The good and the bad, the, the wins and your losses. Got it. You know, and, and uh, I think I think you got to keep doing that because this world will make you think, well, I got to show up with my hands full of material things. Or act like my past has always been rosy so that you don't end up in the same problem. Uh, uh, yeah, and that, that works to your disadvantage. Uh, you got to tell them. You got to tell them where you won. You got to tell them where you lost. And you got to tell them more than anything. I tell them, hey, man, there's grace for it. There's nice. grace for the next step. So I don't want you to beat yourself up if you fall. You got to get back up again and trust that the next breath 
means that God has decided to vote for you. Because the downfall of telling them everything good about you is they don't want to come to you about anything that bad happens to them because they feel like you can't understand that because right. you've never lived that. No, no. When you have lived that, have lived. but you just sh shaded it from them. I have, I have lived. In fact, I almost want to say we're probably a little more transparent about that in, in, this, in our generation yeah. than ever before. Yeah. You know, my yeah. parents didn't talk like that, about stuff like that. I don't know nothing about my parents. I've tried, tried to communicate some things uh, moving forward, especially as they go into college. Because when you go to college, it's on and popping. It's new vistas. It's a, <laughs> new vistas of temptation. <laughs> that you better be ready for, <laughs> you, you know what I'm ready, saying? Man. Yeah. Well, thank you, man, for coming out thank here at the me. Breakfast Club, Houston, yeah. Texas. This Marcus is Davis, Brian Courtney. Thanks for having us, man. It's, we are in one of your busiest days. So what I is it called? It. The Breakfast Club. Which Breakfast Club? The Breakfast Club. They'll get on us if we don't there say the right word there. the. Spell All right. Brian Courtney Wilson on the Lonnie Hunter Variety Show. Stay close. A whole lot more coming up. Love y'all for real. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me, Lonnie. Nice work. I wish I could. But I just don't know how. I don't have the time. I don't have enough technical knowledge to pull this off. I'm too young. No one will listen to me. So what's really holding you back? What if you could create the life you imagine no matter the circumstance or what others think? What if you could move the fear or use it? The choice is yours. Change your thinking, <laughs> you change your life. So if you're willing to take a risk on you to give up something so you can go up, follow me on social media with hundreds of like-minded people becoming the best that they can be. After all, we came to shape the future. Take care. To improve, to impact, to inspire. It's not what I do, but merely who I am, who I'm called to be. I am William A. Brown Sr., overseer founder of Emmanuel Christian Center of Philadelphia and Los Angeles, California. I'm also an author to the nations, and one of my favorite quotes from my book, The Life Changers Quotes for Life, is leadership is not about control. It's about empowering others to take control of their choices. As overseer of Emmanuel Christian Center of Philadelphia and Los Angeles, I invite you to a place of love and no judgment, for we are the church. We are here to repair the breach, for we are the community who are assigned to build communities and become an impact in individual spiritual and natural lives. Visit us, www.EmmanuelChristianCenterInc.com and on Instagram at Emmanuel Christ Inc. I love you all to life and I'll see you soon. It's the Lonnie Hunter Variety Show here on Raymond Television Network, and you know how we've been doing it. It's just a conversation situation. And I gotta tell you, family, after touring so much of what's going on here, I could not do another show without having the founder, CEO, and president of Rayma Television Network right here on the Lonnie Hunter Show, Bishop Eric Lloyd. What's happening, man? Bless you, man of God. How a lot of people don't know that you're not just a television talk show host, but you're also a music pastor. Absolutely. We thank God for having you uh, here at the Rama Television Network. So many facets to what this man is doing. So many households and so many homes and so many lives are being shifted and changed by what's being brought to you through the Rama Television Network. And Bishop, 
we were uh, talking about you, the pastor, the leader. I want to shift to uh, the CEO of a television station that is a major force in the industry. One of the things that I noticed when we were kind of getting uh, closer to the Raymond Television Network is that your programming is such that you get a little bit of everything. Um, when I would turn on to some uh, Christian stations, it would be one thing, one thing only. It would keep my attention for maybe seven minutes and then I'm turning on to something else. But Rhema is different in that. And I don't know if this is um, if this is something that you chose to do, but Rhema has a thing where if you turn it on, the next show that's coming on after that will appeal to a whole nother audience. Um, is, is that strategic on your part? What do you think? That's strategic. Um, it's done on purpose. Like I was telling you yesterday, Rama is considered as a gumbo network. You get a little bit of this, you get a little bit of that. Um, you have some preaching. I didn't want our content to be full of preachers. So I wanted to diversify what we were doing to appeal to a broader audience. Got it. We have people that literally call RTN every single day. Half of the people that call in don't look like you and I. Yeah, Come on, so I'm sure. That's yeah. because we have diversified the Rama Television Network. We have uh, preaching, but we have variety shows like yours, the Lonnie Hunter Show. We have another variety show called Noise of Joy that comes on Fridays at 7 p.m. Uh -huh. um, we have um, a Christian cartoon that comes on the Rama Television Network. We have movies that we are developing. And one thing my wife and I talked about from the very beginning was creating original content. So we have been able to secure a major multi-million dollar production studio. And you have had a chance to yeah. tour our main studio. Right now we're filming uh, from our smaller production studio. But we have been able to secure that studio because we want to create original content. So we're working on cooking shows, we're working on sports shows, and uh, with the help of someone that's sitting right there with you, Sister Lola George, we're going to work on a relationship show. I love so it. I didn't want it to be all preaching. It's been a journey for my wife and I. Uh, most people that know me know I've been in Christian radio and television since 1995. I have worked for several networks. Um, you know, at one particular network, I was the director of community affairs. I built uh, the call center, trained their staff, hired 20 minorities, gave them a chance to do what they like doing, which is helping people. And I paid them at the same time. I hosted a pre-recorded show that kept me on the road. Um, I started a Wednesday night live show. I did that for about six years and I transitioned from that network to another network based out of Easley. Uh, South Carolina, and they brought me in not only as a host, but one of their presidents. And um, I did that for a few years before I was approached by the godfather of Christian Television Network. Most people know him, Dr. Glenn Plummer. Uh, he used to be the president of the NRB. Uh, he approached me about a position in a company that he was forming. They wanted to make me the vice president, but I've been saying this for a long time. When you understand your work, your worth, you control your net worth. Let me say that again. When you understand your worth, you control your network. Good. So uh, we kept going back and forth and the conversations got so heated that my wife said after two days, she started to tell me to, si to sign. I said, no, I'm not going to sign. So three days later, he called me and he said, I heard from God. He said, God told me to do for you the same thing that I did for Apostle Wayne T. Jackson and the Impact Network. Most people don't know Dr. Glenn Plummer started the Impact Network. Dr. Glenn Plummer said, I'm going to help you launch your own Christian television network. He said, Bishop Lloyd, you have paid your dues. You have made other people rich. You have helped others. Now it's time for God to bless you. And that's exactly what happened. Dr. Glenn Plummer actually came up with the name Rama Television Network. And when he said it, it birthed something in my spirit. I said, my God, there's something that you have mentioned a couple of times that I'm glad that you keep mentioning. And I want to sp uh, spend a little time on this particular person, your wife, my wife. How did you all meet? 
my wife and I actually met in junior high school. She was my <laughs> junior high school sweetheart. Are you we serious? Met in junior high school. And, um, you know, the rest is history. We actually been together now for about 30 years. My wife and I have been married going on 26 years. And I think we're so successful in what we do because we work together. We've been working together, Lonnie, since we were teenagers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, my wife, she liked to be behind the scenes, um, but she's always there. My first lady, elect lady, and only lady, Evangelist Shanita L. Lord. Well, if you've been together since junior high, she really is your first lady. <laughs> Before then, don't none of them count because you didn't know what you was doing. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Absolutely. Everywhere I go, I celebrate my wife. Even when I'm preaching out of town and she's not able to go, I, first person I mention is my wife. Um, I tell people all the time, I couldn't do the things that I do without support, support from my from wife. Yeah, and you yeah. said something very key because I always say, uh, people says that behind every good man, there's a good woman. But Eve didn't come out of Adam's back. She came out of his side. She was a real. So beside every good man, yeah. there's a good woman. My wife, amen, is a force to be reckoned with all by herself. Yeah. One of us can chase a thousand. Two of us can put 10,000 to flight. So I celebrate lady, evangelist, prophetess, co-founder, evangelist, <laughs> Shanita L. Lord, once again. Come on, all the titles. Come on, all the titles. <laughs> She's working on her doctorate degree. Come on, somebody. Yeah, so, that's great. Her earned doctorate degree. And I thank God, you know, for my wife. Uh, she's been a tremendous blessing to me. Uh, believe it or not, we have over 60 parishioners at the Rama International Church that are family members. And I hear pastors all the time saying it's hard for them to work with families, but with family members. But in terms of my wife and myself, we attract family members. Yeah, that's so good. On my father's side, on my mother's side, and my in laws, we have over 60 parishioners that are just family members. That is great, Bishop. And, and that I think volumes, volumes to our character. character. It really does. Now, let me say this she watches your show on a regular basis. And when you first came on, RTN, she sat there and she said, I really like Lonnie Hunter. <laughs> She's a hard person to please. Who is she? <laughs> That's what's up, man. Like you, you must be special. She said, I really like Lonnie Hunter. So, Praise you know, God. we celebrate Lady Lloyd. Praise God. Well, listen, Bishop, I'm so glad you spent some time with us and, and came on because I wanted people to know that even though Lonnie is on here and this is who you see every week, this is not my station. So you needed to know and hear and feel the heart of the person that's behind the station that you turn on every week, because if it's not for the right foundation and the right intention, things could come on this station that is bad for you. So we needed to make sure you know who it is that's making decisions for you on behalf of you. So thank you for joining us, Bishop. We appreciate you. It yes, is the Lonnie Hunter uh, show right here on Raymond Television Networks. I gotta go.